Life is a journey with problems to solve and lessons to learn, but most of all experiences to enjoy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and great to see you all attending this uh, very important webinar on the subject of staying positive during times of crisis by Ranjan De Silva and co-hosted by Tanzi Yusuf and organized by the Sri Lankan Business Council. Uh, just to start things off, a few things. This meeting is being recorded and all participants will be on mute. In fact, they're already on mute. In case there are any questions uh, or any clarifications during the session, the chat box will always be open. And we also have a Q&A session at the end. Uh, with that, uh, I'll hand it over to our chairman, the chairman of the Sri Lankan Business Council, Mr. Suren Swaminathan, uh, to welcome you all and kick things off. Mr. Chairman, over to you. Uh, if you can please unmute yourself. Members of the Sri Lanka Business Council, invitees, Ranjan De Silva, Tansi Yusuf, and Pratana. Uh, speakers today. Uh, good morning and a very warm welcome from all of us from the Sri Lanka Business Council. Staying positive during uh, times of crisis. Now, uh, a good topic to speak about. Like, uh, we have been debating in the Business Council as to how we can help our members and community. Uh, well, as Riza rightly said, we cannot help people and we cannot advise people how to run their business. But what we can do is we can help them a little in motivating them by having a seminar like this uh, so that they can take something out of it, like uh, maybe not everything, maybe one small idea that could uh, change things. And that is what all workshops are all about. When you attend a workshop, you attend it with a positive mind. And uh, tough times, yes, inside all uh, difficulties, there is opportunity. So what happens is we have to look at the opportunities. And I think today, if you all can take one small idea from this uh, meeting, it would be a success. So without uh, much, I'll call upon Mr. Reza, who is the project chairman of this, to kindly introduce the speakers of today. If you can please unmute yourself. Okay, um, good morning everybody. Good morning. Um, first morning. of all, I think it's very, um, it's very pleasing to see a cross section of people uh, from Dubai and uh, there are a few people from the other places as well. Um, where do I start? I, I don't think I should be spending too much time introducing Ranjan, Tanzi Yusuf and also supported by Prathana because I think many people I know, you all are, you all are aware of them. The, what I would uh, say, um, I mean, you know, I personally have been associated with Ranjan for a long time we have been schooled together and then we have also worked in the same company for a short time. And Ranjan has been associated with the Sri Lanka Business Council. He did an excellent course for us, uh, a one day program for us a couple of years ago, which was attended by so many people. The, uh, the thing that I would like to say about this particular group of Ranjan is just one thing, because uh, I know many people continue to say that, uh, you know, uh, people who are kind of who we associate here, they continue to say even in the business council that I am personally very positive and optimistic and all those kind of things. But if you look at this crowd, the Ranjan and his crowd, uh, I think we are nothing. I've always admired this group, uh, group for being very positive. And I, I think, you know, this is what I would like to introduce these people as, you know, these people, I've always seen them as, you know, being able to turn things in and look at it in a very positive manner. But I think uh, given the circumstances that we are all in, and again, a uh, couple of you may have already heard me all the time saying that uh, we will have a better world after COVID-19. You know, things are going to be look much better than what people think. 
Um, I, I don't just say it because I, I sincerely believe like that. So I think this is the whole thing about this whole this this, this uh, crisis that we are going through, and how do we look at things in a in a positive manner? And I'm sure there is no better group than these people who are already displaying their positivity all the time, all the time, who can do that. So uh, again, I don't want to take much of the time. So we'll, we'll, I will uh, open the floor to uh, Ranjan, Tanzi, and also Pratana to start the session. Thank you uh, again. Thank you, everybody. Over to you, Ranjan. Thank you so much, uh, Reza. Uh, pleasure being here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Um, yes, uh, two years ago, roughly, we had an amazing session in Dubai, uh, in-room session circumstances have now required us to go online. Uh, but hopefully that's not for too long, because things are changing around. I'm really excited uh, to be back in Sri Lanka. In fact, I was stranded in Bangladesh for two months and then came back did some quarantine at the Blue Waters Hotel and back home now. Uh, but the interesting thing is this entire almost three months period, uh, while I did miss family, just flew through because uh, there's so much the world needed. So we were all involved in doing these sessions. Many of my clients uh, wanted online web shops. We call it web shops, which are uh, not a work webinar where we actually have a workshop type of process. And we're quite excited that on Monday and Tuesday, we will be at the IDH hospital, um, not to get a test, uh, but to actually uh, do, a ses do some sessions for 260 medical practitioners uh, as a thank you for what they have been doing. So we're really excited uh, to be able to go and talk to all the doctors and caregivers. Um, so this is all exciting. And that's what Reza says. Uh, well, things can happen. Initially, there was a little concern. How are we going to do our work? And how is it going to impact our finances when people are not... Uh, willing to do training uh, because of the social distancing issues. But suddenly we realized that people do need us and we feel blessed for it. And uh, I'm really happy uh, to be with you. And talking about that, uh, today we are going to talk about how to develop that positivity. And it's not a, only a long-term process. There are simple concepts and tools in the short term we can use. Uh, it will help us to get there. In fact, uh, this will lead to an invitation to you to join a 10-week course, uh, which Reza is already going through. We started the first batch of uh, a 10-week uh, NLP course. We'll talk about it later, where we have 55 people from 11 countries taking part. But I think uh, Dubai should be very happy. We are highest number of participants are from Dubai, actually. There are 13 from Dubai in my batch. So I think there's something special in this group. Uh, so that's about me to greet you. A little bit about myself, in addition to what uh, Riza said about positivity. Yes, it is uh, nice to be positive, but there's a process to get there. Um, and it's uh, always not easy when you actually face uh, real issues. But I would like to introduce myself in terms of my purpose. What is the purpose of my life? Uh, because I'm not going to waste your time giving my entire CV, which is available on the website if you're interested. A simple system life is to help others become purposeful uh, based on their own realities, based on their own uh, beliefs, values, and methods that they would live their life by. How to become purposeful. And for me, purposefulness is about being in this world with a higher reason being of service to the process of life. And in order to do this, I, I attempt to live by five values. And those five values also is something which helps you become positive. And first value is being empathetic, uh, trying to understand other people. Secondly, to be authentic. I would tell the truth, even if it hurts. Uh, thirdly, to be passionate about what I'm doing, even in the middle of a pandemic, you can be passionate. Fourthly, to be humble. Uh, in the face of the unlimited wisdom in the, of the universe, and fifthly, to be selfless, to be, to be giving, uh, even if it's inconvenient to you. So those are my 
values and i will say yes to any opportunities which comes our way to sow the seeds of purpose in the hearts and minds of people so that we can create ripples to make this world a better place and i consider this one such opportunity where i hopefully at the end of the day i would sow those seeds in your hearts and minds so that you can go away uh, to make your life and the rest of the world much better so with that let me uh, invite my colleague tansy to introduce herself both of us will be running this in tandem so uh, over to you tansy all right good morning good and it's good to see all of you um so my name in completion is tanziza um which my dad gave me and he said it the meaning was revelation uh, even though he sometimes said i was a revolution more than a revelation uh but i think you know sometimes taking off where ranjan left off uh, in hindsight you know my purpose has always been to reveal from a perspective of sharing knowledge and that was my passion as a kid that was my passion in uni and you know it still con continues to be my passion and over the years we started off as a three page purpose uh has turned into a few lines and i've kind of you know taglined it um also influenced by stephen r curry um and it says to live to love to learn to give and to leave the world a better place and what better time than right now uh you know to do your part in leaving the world a better place and uh, i've been through my fair share of you know struggles and uh challenges but here i am you know making a difference leaving the world a better place doing what i truly believe in and when you're doing what you truly believe in how can you go wrong you know how can you not be motivated how can you not be passionate and how can you not be positive yeah so that's me and over to you ranjan thank you so much tansy and a little bit of uh, technical aspects for those who are not very familiar with zoom uh, on the top right hand corner there's something called speaker view so if you click on that speaker view you will only see the speaker plus a few others around on the screen and if you want to get a closer look uh, and like if you have that want to have that tv experience you could have speaker view and after you keep watching the speaker and if you get tired doing that you can click there again and then you have grid view which everyone else comes back online in addition at the bottom panel i'm just talking about the laptop setup set uh, mobile is slightly different but i'm sure you can find it at the bottom panel you have something called uh, next to the stop video button if you click that uh, you can find a virtual background now of course virtual backgrounds don't work for every computer including mine they keep saying that i have a old computer although it's about a year old um and my virtual background doesn't come up that's why i have my natural background at home behind but as you see tanzi my colleague prathana uh, people like reza all of them have a virtual background you can also pick a scenery as well if you like um in addition there is a chat window if you click on chat you have the chat coming up and please do use the chat because we want to have a conversation here we would like to have your questions coming on the chat and also we would like to hear your voice so at the q and a we can perhaps hear your voice as well so these are some of the technical things there's also reactions button you can if you want to clap if you want to you know we put your hand up or wave you can use some of those emojis as well uh, you can put a thumbs up as you see this now or you can clap if you feel inspired Uh, and of course why not use the real clap if you have to let's make this uh, session a little engaging and energetic and inspiring uh what i would like to do is to make it relevant for you so can i ask you uh what are the some of the concerns and challenges that you're facing um right now um and we would like to customize what we say for your challenges Uh, rather than coming up with a pre-planned uh, presentation uh, we do also have a structure we'll talk about it later but if there's any challenges please to type on the chat uh, and ideally challenges um, okay so negative news is one of the challenges yeah so 
how do we work on that? So we'll look at all that and try to come back to it. So there's anxiety, says someone, uh, a lot of negative news, anxiety, any other challenges you're facing right now? So our anxiety is about the future. We're wondering what's going to happen in the future. Yep, so I think at least let's start with those. And if there's anything more specific, please let us know. Insecurity is another one, not too sure whether the jobs will be there. Um, yeah, then of course, staff motivating. How to keep your staff motivated when they're anxious. So this is especially important to all leaders here. Uh, depression, sometimes we do feel depressed in this situation. Tips to keep oneself positive and really believe in the message we share whilst we are motivating others. So believe, if you do believe it, it will be seen in your body language. Uh, Tansy, you want to pick up one or two of the questions? I will not do the answers now. Just summarize yeah. the questions. So I think I, uh, Tariq says, you know, having to now start uh, walking through uncharted waters, not knowing where we're going. Uh, and uh, the effect on kids, which is one of my favorites. Um, yeah, the volatility of everything, including economy. So the whole volatility of things. Uh, yeah, and focusing on your career uh, and its impact on uh, COVID's impact on it. Uh, what if companies are downsizing? So yeah, I think there's a fair share of questions that have come up. So. Quite so, a bit of work for us to do. Yeah, so I think we'll uh, come back to it as we go through the process. Um, so we like to structure this session based on our 10-week course, which is called Mastery of Self. Um, so what we do is once a week, we have a two, uh, two, two and a half hour session. And what we're going to do is we are going to take 10 minutes of each of it and give you some tools uh, which you can right away start using. And if you, of course, get interested in it, you can think about the course. But right now, we want to give you value. Uh, so therefore, if you want to have a look at the course as I go through it, you can go to the website, ideally in another device, so that you still have it, or you can have another window open in the corner. So the website is ranjandisilva.com slash NLP online. So my colleague Prathana will type it in the chat. If you want to go there and watch it as I talk, as both of us talk about it. And Pratana, are you able to also display it on the screen, uh, the web page? Yeah, so we can have that as well. So when you talk about mastery of self, uh, so mastery of self uh, is about, if you say, for example, a master uh, MBA, a master in business administration. Uh, don't get too excited about MBA stands for mentally below average. Uh, of course, some prefer a different version. Um, so anyway, if you say master of business administration, how do you master? That means you know the subject matter. Uh, you know what's positive. You know what works, what doesn't work. That's a master. So when you say master of self, you are able to master your own self, which is knowing your own emotions, your strengths, your improvement areas, your potential, uh, the threats you have in this world. And through that, you will start um, realizing what are the, how do you manage? So a master can control or manage the situation as well. So managing the situation, taking control. So mastery of self is someone who is able to live your life, uh, run your life in a manner you want it to go and getting rid of all the negativity we might be which will pulling us down and um, and also uh, building on the positivity which is available to us as well so it's both sides as well um, so what is nlp so we do master yourself through nlp nlp stands for neuro linguistic programming um, don't worry that's not contagious it's known as a science uh, the Science Digest once said, uh, this is the most promising development in the field of human advancement and also known as the software for the human brain. So NLP was uh, discovered by two scientists by the name of uh, Richard Bandler and John Grinder, two American researchers who were working on their PhD. 
Now again, like MBA, don't get too excited by PhD stands for partial head damage. In fact, once when I said this, someone said, uh, my boss is also a PhD and you're slightly wrong. I said, what do you mean? He said, he's permanently head damaged. So partially or permanently head damaged, their PhD was about human achievement. How do people be the best they can be in this world? What's the difference that makes the difference in them? So what they did is they studied Olympic athletes and movie stars and teachers and preachers and motivators and therapists and doctors. They took people from all professions and found out people who are really top of the world, top in class, to figure out why are they so different to everyone else. And that research showed that they had a set of mental tools that they used in order to get there. So I'll invite Tansy to talk about some of the mental tools used by Richard Bandler and John Grinder. And today we will share as many of that as possible with you in this limited time available. Over to you, Tansy. What are the broad mental tools available to these top performers? Okay, so let me start off by, you know, you know it's always said that the compass comes before the clock. So in NLP, what's something that a tool that we really work on and we spend loads of time is about having purpose, which is also Ranjan's uh, whole com concept on his PhD. Uh, so we talk about purpose, we help you build your purpose, and then we break it down to that we've something that they found was that all of these successful people had something called a minimum that they set up for themselves to achieve. And we call it bottom lines, just like when you run your companies, you know, so there's bottom lines that we work on, on in the various areas that make up your life. We go on to and uh, we program our minds and the whole concept of NLP is that we use language to reprogram our minds and uh, the words we use. Uh, become a hugely important part of how we program our minds. And you were talking about uh, keeping your team motivated, dealing with the kids. So it's, you know, the kind of words that we use that impact how they are feeling. And so we change the language we use. We, uh, you know, look at the vocabulary. Uh, and then we also talk about, you know, fear, uh, about how it seems real. Uh, but, but it's actually false because it's just a perception that somebody created. All of that bad news has created fear in our minds. So we look at how we deal with fear, how we deal with some of the bad habits we've accumulated over the last few months being, you know, in lockdown, sleep too much, eat too much, you know, talk too much, argue too much. So a lot of things, all of those habits we've accumulated, how do we get over bad habits that we've managed to accumulate in the last few months or even you know entire life how do we get over bad memories you know in our process of you know getting used to the new normal right Risa said you know it's going to be a better world you know the opportunities are going to be greater but you know some of those things that the fear of taking a risk or something that it's in our past experience that holds us back uh, you know how do we get over some of that um, you know, uh, how do we get our, or, over our own limitations? And partly it's about, you know, focusing on oneself and becoming the best version you can be of yourself. On the other hand, much of our life is about relationships. So we talk about, you know, NLP teaches us how to understand other people. And Ranjan in his values said empathy was one of the values that he lived by. Right, so how do you build rapport so that you understand the other person first before you invite the other person into your world and we call it pacing and leading. So we enter the other person's world and once we understand, then we invite them back into our world. So how do you pace and lead? How do you work with your subconscious mind? know in order to help us you know build better relationships how do we balance off our life how do we have uh, in organizations we always say is what measures get done so how do we measure what we do on a daily basis 
so that we know it it's connected to our purpose and it also adds value to our purpose so the number of tools are immense and what ranjan and i talk about mostly is tools that have worked to us for us uh, we've experienced them and it's up to you to pick the tools that work for you so it's a lot to work through in the 10 weeks plus also we will work with some of those tools today yeah and over to Great. you ranjan fantastic so let's look at the first session and I'm going to pick up maybe one tool from there to respond to some of the questions that you have come. So Prathana, if you can go up the web page and take, come, come up to session one. Um, so session one is about um, yeah. So in session one, we will do the introduction and setting the stage like uh, the explanation already given basically covers session one, but we would like to show you uh, a tool, uh, an NLP tool, which can be useful. Um, and if you look at the last line in session one, it says physiology. So let me give you an NLP tool now, which you can take away right away and start using it in your life. So normally people say, people act the way they feel. So if you feel happy, how would you act? So can, can you maybe type it? I would like to have a conversation. So if you feel happy or you can put on your audio and respond. Uh, if you feel happy, what do you do? Let's have a conversation. How do you respond? For the feeling happiness, what was the response? Anyone? Come on, let's take part in this. Okay, smile, says someone, a lot of humor happens, right, good. If you feel sad, what do you do? Sad, maybe you start crying, frowning. If you feel angry, what would you do? Punch someone in the face, grind your teeth, or just get into a shell, okay? So all these examples, if you took, what came first? Feeling or action? What came first, feeling or action? Feeling, right? So many of you wrote, feeling came first. We felt happy, acted happy. Felt sad, acted sad. Felt angry, acted angry. But NLP researchers found out that the most successful people in this world, like the top 5%, top 3%, did it the other way around. They acted the way they wanted to feel. So if they wanted to feel happy, they would. Ranjan. The video froze, yeah. Uh, yeah. Connectivity issue on Ranjan's end. Okay, so let me take on yeah, until Ranjan comes on. So uh, NLP, so in, generally we act the way we feel, you know, so if you are angry, you act angry. Um, but in NLP, we say act the way you want to feel. So for example, if you want to feel happy, but you're not, you're having a lousy morning, like my daughter was telling me just now, uh, you know, that one of her friends were going through a tough time and they'd been up till four in the morning. So obviously their morning isn't that great, but you know, you act the way you want to feel, you, you know, act as if you're happy and after a while, you actually begin to feel happy because our actions are connected to our emotion. So when you change the action, you also change the emotion. So let's see practically whether this works. So we're gonna do a very quick few second example um, while we wait for Ranjan to reappear and let's see whether it works. Oh, here he is, Ranjan's back. So over to you, Ranjan. Uh, Ranjan, you're mute. Cool. Is it okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry about it. Something happened. Uh, so, Tansy, uh, you were saying, so did you uh, fill in something while I, I was away? Yeah. So, we talked about acting the way we want to feel uh, is yeah. what you do in NLP. So, you can take them through the activity itself. Yes. 
So a little. Okay, it looks like he froze again. <laughs> Maybe he's acting the way he wants to feel frozen. <laughs> All right, so let's get on to the activity. So what I'd okay, like you now. to do. All right. Stop. Yeah, please do it with me. Rub, it, rub your forehead, bite your lips, tense your face. Keep doing that. Keep looking down. Grind your teeth, squeeze your eyes, and continue. Continue to rub your forehead and your face. Uh, Ranjan, we lost. What did you feel right now? It's too late, so go back. Okay. Uh, they lost, lost the, or? yes, uh, instructions. Uh, okay, let's start again. Then. Yeah. Okay. Tansi, can you take them through instructions? And let's do sure. it because I think I need to restart and come back because there was a disconnection. That's why it's not. So you take them through the exercise, please. Yeah. All right, so here's what we're going to do. You know, when you go into a situation where you're tensed and you're upset over something or you have a problem. So what you do is you put your, you know, your shoulders tend to shrink, you bend forward, you start, you know, rubbing your head. So I want you to start doing that just like you're going through it. So let's do that. So look down, grind your teeth, wrinkle your forehead. And keep doing that. So look down. Okay. And um, all right, let's come up soon. Let's share very quickly. You can unmute yourselves and let's share what you felt like while you were doing that. Other than the fact that you're wondering what the hell's happening. Anybody? It was a bit claustrophobic. It was a bit claustrophobic. If I left you there, you, some of you might have gone off to sleep. Anything else? So let's see if we have anything type. No. no. Anybody else? Anybody who felt like, yes, you're gonna... You feel uh, better. Sorry? You feel better. You get a relief. You get a relief, okay. Yeah, so, you know, each one your is wired is differently. Sorry? Your tension, your tension is off. No more your tension. tension is off. So, okay, so by changing, generally what happens is 80%, so you're the 20% who are always positive, I guess. 80% of the people who go through that physiology generally tend to feel tensed or, you know, all their worries start coming on. Uh, they feel sleepy and lazy and claustrophobic. So that's what generally happens. So Ranjan, we've done the first one. Now we'll take them through the second one. Yeah. So very quickly, therefore, given some of the questions you had, when you feel that anxiety, uh, change your body movement, just get up, go for a walk, listen to some music, do something which is useful, which is purposeful. I know one of the participants who is taking part in the course says, she now wakes, when he wakes up in the morning, she dresses up, although she's working from home, she dresses up as if she's going to office. So just dressing up, combing your hair and just you start feeling the physiology starts making you feel good and positive. Um, so any anxiety you're having can be overcome by simply just taking that first step. Take the first step. I'm, I'm sure you saw this uh, US Navy Admiral's video, which says, you know, wake up in the morning and first thing, make your bed. You know, once you do that, you take a step. So it activates something in your brain, which makes you feel positive. The second tool which is useful uh, is called the pink elephant. So let me right now ask you to do something with me, another little exercise. So right now, think of anything in this world, but don't think of a pink elephant. Think of anything, but please don't think of a pink elephant only. I want you to think of anything else, but only don't think of a pink elephant. Everything else is fine, but not a pink elephant. What do you think about? What do you think about? Uh, a pink elephant. Okay. Okay. You thought about a pink elephant, of course. Because the brain doesn't understand the word don't. 
So therefore, NLP found out that the most successful people use vocabulary without don't attached to it. So if I said, don't come late, you might be late. So how would you tell that to yourself? Come on time, come early. Don't feel angry, be happy. Don't panic, don't panic, and everyone starts panicking. Calm down, calm down. You see the you know, COVID numbers going and start panicking. Don't panic means you panic more. Okay, calm down, let's look at it. Let's see what it really means. So you start taking the don'ts out. I like even don't make a mistake, say it correctly. Don't fail the exam. And I'm sure those of you who have little children will find this so useful. If you go and tell them, you know, don't do that, that's exactly what they do. So, you know, don't, you know, play with that device all the time. They want to play more with the device. So how would you say that instruction? Tell them to do something instead of that. Okay, let's go play cards. Let's go play carrot. Let's go for a walk. Um, so getting people focused on something else. Now, if you have to use the word don't, uh, you use it, but tell the reason why. So, for example, don't smoke. Now, how do I say don't smoke uh, without using the word don't? I have to say it. But then I say don't smoke. If you smoke, you will die of cancer. You know, and say the reason why. And that will make people realize there's a danger. So, two rules here. One is as much as possible, take the word don't out of your vocabulary. And secondly, even though you, uh, if you have to use it, Tell the reason why. Use it, tell the reason why. Say don't. So uh, don't be anxious for anxiety. You know, stay calm. Just change it. So change as much as possible. Uh, sometimes you felt lazy, right? So if I say don't be lazy, I'll feel more lazy. Or if you tell your children, your spouse, don't be lazy, they'll feel more lazy. Just say, you know, let's do something, be energetic. Again, connect that with the physiology. You know, let's get up, let's go for a walk. So take something little and also get people, children and others to do something they love to do, uh, not the boring stuff. And of course, you say they love to play with the device. Okay, fine. Let them take the device up and watch a learning video in that. Uh, I mean, do something. And I, of course, you remember attention spans are so small. So don't give a two-hour video to watch. You know, they'll fall asleep in five minutes. Give something which is two minutes long which has a message, oh, that's interesting, I want to watch more. So slowly get into it, slowly get even the negativity, so let's, it has to be baby steps into the world. Uh, Tansy, would you like to add something onto that? Uh, can't hear, I think you're on mute. Unmute. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, it's about this whole thing about devices. By telling them don't, all you do is attract them to it. And one of the best thing to do is to get them into things that are more interesting than the device. I've seen kids and parents who've also got involved and you know, they're painting, they're gardening, they're doing all kinds of things that parents didn't have time to do prior. But they've managed to get the kid out of the device mode just by getting them involved. So, Telling them don't doesn't work. And their mind is a pot of curiosity, not just their mind, our mind is also a pot of curiosity. So the more you tell us not to do something, don't do something, we will go after it. You know, uh, that's how the original scene started. Uh, so because of that, tell them what they can do, give them action oriented work. Even with your team, when we say, you know, don't be upset they're not going to stop being upset because they still have those, we'll, we'll change the words later, but they still have those insecurities. They still have those fears. They still worry about their jobs. Uh, so telling them, don't be upset, you know, don't worry, just makes them worry more. So tell them what they can do. You know, be indispensable. Yeah. All right, over to you, Ranjan. Maybe you'd want to share the Chinese uh, joke. Adam and Eve was a don't, right? You know, don't eat from the apple tree. And they would have wondered, why this tree? You know, why, why not other trees? 
and if they didn't even show the tree, none of the original seed would have started. In fact, if someone said if Adam and Eve were Chinese, we wouldn't have any of the problems because they would, they would have eaten the snake and left apple alone. Uh, so of course it didn't happen in that manner. Um, the uh, third um, tool, which is the, I will briefly touch on that, uh, is called questions are the answers. So if you ask yourself positive questions, you get positive answers. If you ask yourself negative questions, you get negative answers. If I ask myself, why am I so unsuccessful? The brain will say, oh, that's because you were born in a third world country. That's because the education was poor. That was, that's because the traffic was bad. That's because the politicians were corrupt. That's because your father didn't love you. But I didn't have a father. But if I, I, I loved my sister then better than me. But I didn't have a sister. But if I had a sister, he would have loved my sister better than me. So you would have all kinds of reasons you give uh, why you are not successful. But what would be a better question to ask? Instead of asking, why am I not successful? What would be a better question? Perhaps you can ask, how can I be more successful? And in this pandemic, this is so important. Rather than asking, you know, what am I going to do about this situation? You know, uh, just rather than going into a depression, you know, how do I succeed? What steps would I take? Uh, why this pandemic? Okay, rather than asking why this pandemic, how could, how do I use this to my benefit? How do I use this to help others? How do I use this to enhance my compassion? Or let's say you're having um, a drop in income. Some of you who are uh, maybe in businesses having obviously there's income drops happening. So if you ask, you know, why is why is why are customers not buying my product? Why is my income dropping? You feel more depressed. But asking yourself, what can I do to serve my customers better? Are there certain products they want more of? Can I give that more? Are there other customers out there who requires my products right now? Uh, so while asking those questions, you suddenly realize uh, that things are different. Uh, Fancy, would you like to add something to that? Yeah. Um, see, a lot of the people that I'm working with currently, because I also work as a counselor, uh, you know, they were all feeling like, you know, why, why is this happening to me? You know, why is the world going? Because there was, you would uh, remember, there was a whole series of things from bushfires to, you know, earthquakes to, um, landslides to all of that and then there was the pandemic so everybody started asking why 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 and you know i had people who'd gone into depression who didn't know what to do who felt isolated and then when you started asking them you know what best can you use this time for people started i know one young lady is actually writing a book which he has wanted to write for a long time. Another actually spoke to his mom and they'd been, you know, not talking for so long, even though they lived in the same house, mind you. So they made up this, because that was all they could do. They had to talk to each other. They live in the same house. But it's all about asking what questions instead of why questions and how questions instead of the why questions. Because if you keep asking why questions, you will only get reasons. Why am, I, why, why am I not successful? Why am I, you know, like this? Why was I born in Sri Lanka? So then you'll just get reasons. But if you ask how and what questions, you're going to get action-oriented answers. And that's the whole secret of life. And sometimes when ask. we, yeah, sometimes when we uh, talk to our children, let's say, why are you not studying? Uh, that's opening up a lot of excuses. There will be lots of reasons why. Okay. So instead of that, if you go and ask, um, how can you uh, focus more? Uh, what subjects are you more interested in? Um, so have a conversation, even your team members. Why are you not selling enough? You know, how can you sell more? So get them thinking with the how question. So which is such a powerful uh, tool. Uh, which we, uh, you know, learn from NLP. Um, by the way, I keep using the term NLP. I don't know whether I adequately explain. N is neuro. Neuro is our brain and nervous system. Linguistics is language. And programming is like programming a computer. So NLP is the 
the software for the human brain or the language we use to program our brain. Uh, with that, we will go to the second session uh, and see some tools that we are going to share there. So se second session is about happiness and success. What is happiness? What is success? And uh, we'll also talk about the concept. So simply to say this, there are two broad types of happiness. Some people say, I am happy when I go to the movies. I am happy when I eat uh, ice cream. I am happy on my birthday when everyone starts wishing me. I am happy, happy on uh, the increment day uh, when people, uh, you know, when I get an increment. I am happy when I buy a new car. So sometimes for a lot of people, again, like the majority, maybe 90, 95%, for them, happiness is an external thing. Something has to happen outside for happiness to happen. And that's the majority. And that's called happiness, the sensation. Happiness, the sensation. It's a feeling. Even when you buy a new car, you may not be happy with the car until people come and appreciate it and say, wow, that's a nice car. When did you buy it? And then you start offering lifts to people as well, which you normally don't do so that they can smell the new leather and start appreciating and say, wow, great car you got here. Um, so that's one kind of happiness. But I'm sure you'll all agree that's so temporary. Uh, the other form of happiness is happiness, the being. You're a happy being. I'm, I'm born happy. I'm born to be a happy person. Uh, I am born to grow to my fullest potential. And knowing that I'm growing, makes me happy. Knowing that I'm growing to my fullest potential makes me a happy person. And those people will say, I'm always happy, but sometimes I become sad when I see, uh, you know, when my child is sick or if I lose a loved one in the family, I feel a bit sad, but generally I'm happy. But the happiness, the sensation will say, I'm normally sad, uh, but I'm happy when I do all these things, the movies and the increments and the car and whatever it is. So obviously, happiness, the being, is the better one. And um, given that, let me give you a simple definition for happiness. If you like, you can write it down and I can say it as well. Perhaps Pratana can type it into the chat. The simple definition for happiness is in the areas of your life, most important to you, your ability and willingness to even be in discomfort Enjoying the benefits of growth is happiness. I'll say that again. In the areas of your life, most important to you. So pick the areas important to you. Is it health? Is it family? In the areas which is most important to you. Your ability and willingness or your willingness and ability. You're willing to even go into discomfort. Your willingness and ability to even be in discomfort, enjoying the benefits of growth, is happiness. So which means that happiness is about growing to your fullest potential. And being in that mode makes you happy knowing that you're growing. You haven't still got the achievement. For example, do you get the best growth when you study for the examination for six months or when you get the results? Where do you get the best growth? The six months you were studying or when you get the results? Obviously, you'll agree when you were studying the six months, that's where the real growth is. Or let's say you're going to the gym to lose some weight. Do you get the real growth when you know that you lost the 10 kilos or every day you go and work out and go through that sweat and the sacrifice you do? That's where the real growth happens. So would you therefore agree with me that all forms of growth require some discomfort. All forms of growth require discomfort. And all those people who are successful in their life, in this world, in their professions, really cherish that discomfort. They love to go for those practices and give up all the unnecessary food and the parties because they knew that discomfort was so important for their growth. So the next time you come across some discomfort, tell yourself, I, I love this discomfort. It's helping me to grow. And if you create that mindset and develop that mindset, then you'll start realizing 
uh, that every moment of life is happy, especially right now in the pandemic, you should be happy because you're going through a discomfort, uh, maybe in terms of your anxiety or job or relationship or even the pan. I mean, I hope it doesn't happen, but if, it, if you get infected, just enjoy the process, you know, just go through it uh, because it is building your immunity. Uh, and you know the numbers, especially in our part of the world, very minute percentage actually gets infected. And even from that, a very small percentage loses their life. And, and that is generally those who have pre-existing conditions and who are not being careful. And chances are they would have anyway, something might have happened to them anyway, because God has a plan, you know, God has the deadline, it's not us. If you did not get COVID, you would have you know, got hit by a car. Uh, and died if, if, if it had to happen. So it's all about, you know, being in this world in the most positive way, knowing that everything happens for a reason and doing what is required to be done to protect yourself, social distancing, maybe go, you know, look after the, you know, investment funds for the kids. Doing all that stuff is important while they're enjoying life. So that's basically what we're talking about in the second session about happiness. Hans, you want to add something there? Um, yeah, I guess the one thing that we need to remember is like the story where once there was a man um, and he was searching for something under a light post because the light was there. And he was searching and then a passerby asked him, you know, what are you searching for? And he said, you know, I'm searching for the house keys. So the man being the passerby who had a very altruistic mind um, actually started helping him search. And as they searched, he just asked him, you know, are you sure you dropped the key under the light post? And he said, no, I dropped the key inside the house. And then the man asked, so why did you, you know, find the key under here? And then he said, you know, because there's a light over there. So we're all busy, uh, you know, searching for happiness in the outside, whereas the key to the hug, happiness is right inside of us. So the more we run after happiness, it runs faster. But if we calm down and, you know, accept that's already here and the sense of havingness, you'd always be happy no matter what we go through. Oh, fantastic, thank you. So let's go to the third session and please do ask questions if there's any, if you miss out anything, we'll come back to you. Um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I think it's uh, positive comments we're having, sacrifice is important. We need to step out of the comfort zone. In fact, someone said, you know, the harder I work, the luckier I become. And if you want to look good, you must have the courage to look bad. By the way, luck is not winning the lottery ticket. Luck stands for laboring under correct knowledge. L-U-C-K, laboring under correct knowledge, doing the hard work with the correct knowledge. And of course, for you to grow, you must let go of the ego. ego. If you have the ego, you will not try to do something which will make you look bad. And ego stands for edging growth out. And you can even say edging God out. And um, sometimes we you know, have fear. Uh, trying to do something new and fear is false education appearing real false education i mean you, you're not going to fail people are not going to laugh at you and even if you fail you're going to learn something and pick up from there in fact we're going to talk about that in the second session as well how to convert words uh, into positive uh, not going to go into that in detail but one or two words may be just to uh, given the anxiety so if you I talk about stressed. Some of us are highly stressed. So transformation vocabulary is <clears throat> you will convert that into a word like blessed with responsibility because you're stressed because you're lost of responsibility. It's just I'm blessed with responsibility. And if you start thinking about your children and your job and whatever you are blessed with, your stress goes away. Or instead of saying overloaded, just say I'm over demanded. Uh, right now and when you say I'm over demand that you tell yourself how talented and how valuable your talent and your time is so turning negative words into positive words like when I was stuck in Bangladesh uh, I you know initially felt lonely 
but later on I converted into I'm available. I'm available to my family still uh, through the internet. I'm available to the rest of the world. And I became so available to people and that kept took my loneliness totally away and kept myself going for those three months totally purposeful and engaged and positive. I'm sure Tansy can talk about that as well. And maybe you can add one or two uh, negative words convert into positive. Yes, uh, something that I hear constantly right now is called, you know, I'm feeling depressed. And here we're not talking about clin clinical depression. We're talking about that feeling of, you know, low energy, uh, don't know what to do kind of depression that we're talking about. Um, and if we keep saying that long enough, uh, the danger is we might actually get clinically depressed. The reason we feel depressed is quite often because we have no clear clarity of where we're going and we want more from life. So instead of saying depressed, just say I want more from life. And then your mind will ask, well, what more do you want? Let's work on it. So it's about, you know, using a word that is more productive in that sense. Yeah. Uh, so we uh, have an interesting question, I think, and that's very relevant to the third session. Um, so I think two questions, both of them are relevant from a uh, question which comes from uh, um, what, so I think there's a question which someone has written down, what would be the effect uh, before, post the pandemic? As you mentioned earlier, the world would surely be a different place. However, what negative impact should be we should we be ready for is one. Uh, another one is thank you so much for the tips. Could we please also focus on the reality now? If you are a person who have just lost the job and only the breadwinner living on a visa in Dubai where the market is down and businesses are closing, how can we demotivate himself in reality? It is such a real question, real situation. So I think... Uh, the third session, purposefulness, has some answers. Uh, whilst uh, initially taking steps possible required uh, for you to uh, do something. So let's say you lost the job. So what are the first things you can do? Um, in this kind of situation, there are two questions to ask yourself. In fact, that's related to stress management. I'll bring it forward because it's relevant to the question. Uh, and then I will come back to session three later. So if you want, you can write down the questions, two questions. Question number one is how do I take good care of myself right now? How do I take good care of myself right now? Question one. And also in this situation where you talk, talk about the loss of job, you can say, how do I take good care of my family right now? So that's the first question. Second question is, can I change the situation? If not, can I change my attitude? Can I change the situation? If not, can I change my attitude? So if you take this example of uh, job being lost, family to feed, uh, and all these issues coming up, ask yourself, how do I take good care of myself? So first answer is be calm, be focused. Because right now, if you get panicked, if you get angry, uh, if you start you know, losing it, things will get worse. I'm sure you would agree in this most important situation is to be calm and confident, and especially how do I take good care of my family right now? Also be totally calm, confident, because if you get upset and angry and talk all about all the negativity which can happen, the family can also get into more anxiety. So that's the first question. How do I take good care of myself right now? Second question is, can I change the situation? Obviously, you can't change the situation. You can't change the pandemic. You can't change the situation that you have lost a job. But what can you change? You can change your attitude. Okay? So first of all, attitude of gratitude. So being grateful for what you have right now. So first take a piece of paper and write down, what are the things I have right now? Okay, see family is with me. They are okay. Maybe you have some savings. Maybe you have some assets which are not required. Maybe you have maybe some property back home. There might be family out there. So think about all the things you have in your life, right? <coughs> focusing on that. Okay. And 
attitude of gra attitude change starts with an attitude of gratitude. So what can I be grateful for right now? Uh, I'm still maybe in Dubai. That's something to be grateful for. Now, then next thing is, what can I do about the situation? So take positive step. Okay, can you start applying for jobs right now? So just focus on applying for jobs. Uh, are there, can you talk to banks and um, talk about maybe rearranging some of your loans and whatever things you have and any short term facilities? Can you reach out to people? Uh, sometimes you have to let go of ego in this situation. So you need to look after. Can you reach out for family? Reach out to people who might be philanthropic. See what can they do. Maybe they might give you a job. Maybe they give a handout. Can you reach out? I know we don't want to sometimes take handouts, but sometimes the situation might require. Take it with gratitude and realize that those handouts might be coming from the higher powers, from the almighty, who might be there to help. So once you're calm and cool and family is okay and some initial basics are taken, you'll be in a more confident posture to go look for those jobs. Uh, maybe start doing a small business uh, on your own. Maybe there are a lot of things people want, maybe home deliveries and uh, lots of things are coming up. New types of businesses are popping up. Uh, I Today, one of my past participants talked about how she had started an online clothing business. She was a fashion designer, wanted to start her own brand, but was working somewhere else. And with this happening, one month ago, she started sell, doing designing and selling clothes. She had unbelievable amount of success selling her clothing online. So could you go start a website and start, you don't if you have a real website, just start a Facebook page to start with. If you don't have the money to pay that $70 for the website, um, and do a Facebook page, spend some time. So do purposeful things uh, to start, you know, selling something, selling services, um, helping people, guiding people. Maybe you can be a tuition master. I don't know what. There are loads of stuff available out there. So that's my input. And then, of course, uh, engage with the high commission, various people if you want to get back home. Uh, see, and again, that decision has to be carefully taken. Should you stay back in Dubai, go back home? Maybe when you come back, maybe the cost will be lesser. There is a better support system. You restart, but maybe you lose the opportunities which might be there in Dubai. So all these kinds of uh, situations come up. So that's basically my broad. So use the two questions in any situation. This is, I took it for your job block situation. It can be useful. Karensi, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, uh, I'll take a very practical example. So I've met this lady and uh, when Ranjan was saying about delivery, uh, it kind of clicked. She used to work, uh, now does not have a job, does not have a husband, has two kids, uh, an only child and does not have parents either. So she was on her own, two kids and not much of a saving. So she decided to do, um, you know, to be very creative and now she's one happy woman. Um, she started going to certain, you know, bulk uh, and bulk purchase essentials. And she got hold of her regular three-wheeler guy and got a pass and she started distributing. So now that the lockdown is over and you and I can just go out and buy what we want, she actually calls up all her regular customers during that period. She sends now, I, yesterday I got a list of all the stuff she has available, uh, you know, how quickly she can deliver, you know. So suddenly it's a whole business. And she says, you know, now I'm a thriving business. I've managed to convert two of my rooms into storage so that, you know, I live by use the proper methods of storage and there is no contamination. She sends you pictures of it. Uh, you know, all of us have the resources. It's not just the money. It's sometimes, you know, just the thoughts that we require. And I know a young gentleman who actually lost his job. He was a front office manager and uh, hotels don't have business so they've not been paid for the last three months and he decided to start his own reservation business and uh, again you know you just use the resources and you have and the love in the love and the passion you have and once you put love and passion into it like Ranjan said three months in Bangladesh and 
you know, he hadn't a day to spare. Uh, that's what happens. Uh, again, uh, Ranil has said that asking to be calm, be focused is extremely tough if one has kids who are starving because the breadwinner is no longer working, maybe about to be thrown away from the resident. And there are so many others, um, so many people who might be actually going through this kind going of through. situation. I do agree, but what I'm saying, the question is, what is better? I mean, is being angry and upset and anxious and all that, is it going to help you? At least changing will help a little bit. I'm not telling you to be happy and dancing when all this stuff is happening. At least start taking one notch upwards. You know, if you take the, the types of emotions we have, there's a, so there's a ladder of emotions. The lowest form of emotion is called apathy. Apathy is given up, it's hopeless, there's nothing I can do about it. And sometimes a lot of you who are facing that might be in apathy right now. Now, once you get over apathy, you say, okay, I'm going to do something about it. It goes into grief. Grief is maybe you cry, you let go, uh, and it's okay to let go of all that. And uh, then comes fear. So what's going to happen next? Some apathy means you don't even feel the fear. You're sort of completely given up. So maybe some of you might be in the fear situation. Uh, how do you sort of overcome the fear? So point I'm saying is take baby steps. I know it's tough. Uh, and again, if the community can get together and do something for those who are getting, you know, losing houses and something and reach out, I'm sure there are lots of philanthropists uh, who might be there to help. Maybe those people who are not having the energy to go out and ask for help. Those who are already doing okay can go get help, uh, create a fund, maybe get a house where you can have three families living until they get a job. So the point I'm saying is, what can we do step by step? Yes, it is not easy. Sometimes we say, fake it till you make it. You're not feeling good, but at least you look good to the outside, at least to your family, so that they don't drop further and say, I'm doing my best and see what best can be done. Uh, yeah, very tough situation, but I think that's how we will start applying it. Any comments, questions? Okay. Uh, Pranjan, I'd like to add something on, and uh, this I also learned uh, during my PhD, studying for my PhD. And in Buddhist philosophy, we have something called Sammasati, which is about mindfulness. The world is moving towards it. Pratana might be no better than me about it. Um, and it says, you know, the only thing we can do and the only thing moment we are promised is now. So I could drop dead in the next second. So I only have this, you know, second or nanosecond that's available to me. And what can I do in this moment to take life forward? What can I do in this moment to take life forward? As if my life depended on it. So whether, you know, you call up somebody and ask for help, whether, you know, you all get together and create that fund, whether it's about taking a decision with your family to come back, or sometimes it could, the fact that we don't talk to our children about the challenges we are going through can be very detrimental for them. So my moment right now might be to sit my kids down and say, you know, here's what we're going through. And I and your mom or, you know, or your dad, we're doing the best to make sure that we're going to be okay. Now, because they need that belief that you as parents are going to be there. And should you need anybody to talk, Pratana is a psychologist and a counselor. I'm a psychologist and a counselor. Please feel free to get in touch with us. We're here to support you in your journey. But do what you can in this second as if your life depends on it. Over to you, Ranjan. Yeah. And interestingly, taking it to a, a slightly spiritual level, once you start becoming positive with little baby steps, you have abundance flowing towards you. You might say, okay, God helps those who help themselves. It could be a religious way of looking at it. Um, you also heard of law of attraction. If you, it's like a magnet. If you have positivity, more positivity comes to you. So sometimes you start creating that by those little steps. Sometimes it's almost impossible, uh, but still you move forward. And that's when it opens up. 
so just let's focus on that. I hope that's useful. And if there's anything as Tanzi and Prathana offered, if you can, if three of us can do anything, we'll be really happy to be there. Um, can Prathana, can you run, open up the uh, course again? Uh, I think we are almost coming close to the end of the session. So I'll run through this and then we'll open for questions. Uh, the, so the third and fourth session is about purpose of life. Uh, why are we here? And sometimes in this situation, it might be good to reflect. Why are you in this world? So for me, purposefulness is using our God-given talents to be of service to this world. Uh, you know, we are all a process of life. So finding that uniqueness and taking those little steps. And I think Tansy spoke about it at the beginning as well. Find the bigger, it's like a personal mission. Why are you in this world? And sometimes a lot of people say to get, but I'm sure sometimes when you give, uh, you get more joy in giving. Um, and sometimes giving is not only always being philanthropic, but maybe giving jobs to people might be, uh, they are also adding value to your business. Um, you know, lots of things. So purposeful and purposeful behavior, maybe Tansi can quickly talk about it, uh, related to what we, the pandemic issues we are having. Session four. Um, yeah, so very quickly, I guess, um, something uh, on session four is that, you know, your purpose is like a huge tapestry. It's your life's meaning. And then we need to get there in the different areas of your life. It could be relationships, it could be knowledge, it could be finances, it could be uh, your sorry, your physical self and your spiritual self as well. So what are we going to do in baby steps in the next month, maybe in the next three years in order to get to our purpose? And at the beginning, I said what gets measured gets done. So it's very important that we set up a measure of our success on a daily basis as well. So we take you through a 10-point day where you can at the end of the day say, you know, well, how much did I achieve? Some of them do it religiously. They mark it and do it. Some of us are a little more wayward. We kind of do it mentally. But whatever we method we use, it's about, you know, knowing where am I compared to where I started. And it gives us a measure of where we are going. So it takes us through, you know, a better plan and a measure in order to get to our purpose. And the key isn't to get the 10 points, it's to constantly keep aiming. So even if you get three points, you've got to congratulate yourself because you achieved. Right? And in this time of pandemic, it's very important that we appreciate each other and we appreciate what we're doing as well. And that's part of being you know, positive and motivated and happy, the happiness being. Don't have a penny in my pocket, but I'm still happy. Over to you, Ranjit. Yeah, so the next few sessions are to do with uh, love and relationships. Um, uh, because once you look after yourself, you need to also uh, be with each other. And simply for me, the whole idea of love is about uh, helping someone to grow. Sorry. The iPhone is growing. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, there was a... Yes. Uh, so it's all about um, helping someone to grow to their fullest potential, um, not trying to be like someone else. It's not about narcissism. Uh, so I, I like to uh, read out something at this point, uh, which is about, uh, it has a combination of love, it has a combination of... Uh, uh, our potential and everything we have, a little poem, uh, which I think might be useful to also set the stage uh, in what we are doing. Uh, so let me just uh, share a, little, a poem which is called The Little Proud, uh, which um, will sort of give some sense to what we're talking about here. So it goes this way. So when I say little cloud, I want you to think about maybe your children, uh, grandchildren, maybe it might be uh, your own self. And here we go. In your lifetime, there will be answers no one really knows but you. So remember, 
because the world will make every attempt to define the truth. And the last thing you want is the shape you take to be a product of their stories passing through. They don't want white, they want blue. They don't want shade, they only want crystal clear view. But little cloud, that's not you. In fact, you are above all that. The moment you turn away from who you were meant to be, well, that's the very moment you are indistinguishable from life underneath. Look, I don't mean to scare you. I'm being sincere. You can't fly to the moon if you are held down by fear. And the pressure it builds up, it, it precipitates your tears. You can always recover like those who were down, but don't leave life undiscovered year after year. See, whether you realize it or not, little cloud, you're on top of the world. So know you, know that you are. I mean, look, you fly around with the sun and the moon and the stars. You take a sample of blue canvas and convert it to art. You think that's nothing, little cloud? Then I don't know where to start. See, life is better every day because you are here. Without you, there will be no, moon, no uh, ocean and boats and captains to steer. No sunrise and collages to watch and revere. You turn rays of light into pink and teal chandeliers. If you think that's nothing, little cloud, I beg of you, let the logic reappear. There's no limitation to what you can be, so keep your eyes on the spot where the sky meets the sea. That little cloud is where life truly begins. And little by little, you'll start to believe. So that's a little offering I would like to give you at this point uh, to remind ourselves that we might think that we are little, but so much potential, so much creativity, uh, and that's about helping our children. Love is about helping our kids, our teams, to be the best they can be and to believe in themselves as well. Uh, the rest of the sessions is all about tools, about giving up bad habits and bad memories, uh, how to motivate yourself. Uh, so a lot of tools are there uh, in this whole process. So if you are, want to have a deeper experience, please do look at it. Uh, we uh, offer it at a very special price. We call it a pandemic price of $60 for the entire uh, 10 weeks. Uh, never before given. We don't want to give, give something away to you as well. So with that, let me uh, invite Tansy to add anything, and then we can open up for questions and answers. Um, not much to add, Ranjan. I think we've covered as much as we can. I think we should open it up for questions, because uh, that would be more appropriate, I would say. Yeah, I, I think Risa had asked a question, what are the emotions after fear? So we started by saying there's apathy, there's grief, there's fear. Next to fear, there's a wanting, which is called lust. I want this, I want that, and the greed, lust. So that's kind of a next level of fear. And then once you um, have that, uh, sometimes you become angry. So that, that's the next level of emotion. You have anger. And uh, ang angry at the world, angry with each other because you're not getting what you want. And then finally, it goes to pride. Once you get something, you're proud. Okay, I have everything. That's also a negative emotion. Those are the, all the, the, the hierarchy of negative emotions. Apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, and pride. Then there are three positive emotions, which is courage. From pride, you move to courage. You become courageous, take steps, go ask for help, go look for jobs. Courage. Then you have acceptance. Accept the world as it is, the beingness. The pandemic has been given to us for a bigger reason, acceptance. And that gives us the final level, which is peace. You're peaceful even in the most you know, difficult situation. So it is kind of a hierarchy of emotions we go through. And we are right now fighting in the act flap emotions at the bottom layer. And I know some of you are already evolved. You have gone into the higher levels. Uh, so that's what it is. So the name yeah, of the I poem mean, I just sorry. said was The Little Cloud by Eric Carl. The Little Cloud by Eric Carl. You can see all these poems in my YouTube channel. I got loads of them. And we'll be also reciting them during our sessions. Uh, Tansy, you want to talk about something? 
Oh yeah, no, I've said I've also typed them in on the chat, so the uh, emotions are in there as well. Oh, fantastic. Any other questions? Okay, there's a question, giving makes a person happy. Is this normal? Well, again, there's no right answer. In, in my world, you know, all our, what works for me doesn't work for you because I may have a different value system, different education, but you need to just experience it and see. And a lot of people say, you know, when I give it away, and it doesn't have to be monetary. Sometimes, you know, like us giving time today makes us so joyous. Um, so it could be a time, it could be a little compassion, a little love. Um, I, I think it works. Uh, again, of course, I'm not preaching. You need to just go find out for yourself. So what would be the effect? Uh, what would the effect be this pandemic, as you mentioned earlier? Uh, would uh, the world surely be different place? However, what negative impact would be there? Uh, so I think what happens is there are certain businesses which will get affected uh, at least in the next year or two like travel and airlines, um, tourism. But again, if you look at it, uh, though there's a need for it, people want to get away. So like now, right now, Sri Lanka uh, being COVID free, uh, at least based on the knowledge for last for 40 days since 30th April, because only cases are the uh, those the navy uh, pandemic which was there as well as the uh, you know, those who came from overseas so i think first august or something uh, country is going to open up for tourism there's uh, going to be a lot of uh, and today i heard uh, emirates sent a message saying they're starting 16 destinations today so it's, it'll start happening but it'll be slow but there are other industries uh, which might be much more powerful uh, maybe the IT industry, telecommunication industry, um, you know, retailing from the grocery side, home deliveries, but maybe some of the fashion uh, design retailing might go down, but the more basic requirements might go up. Uh, education might have a higher uh, demand. So what you need to do is start analyzing to see post pandemic, what are the industries which are going to thrive? What are the industries which are going to suffer? Even within those industries, there will be a lot of uh, different ways of doing. You still need to have your haircuts. You need to still, you know, go out and eat. So there might be restaurants, but the restaurant designs might be different. There'll be more space. Uh, there'll be airlines. Maybe the, you know, cabins will be reconfigured to provide social distancing. Uh, so you might have a lot of changes happening. And these changes require new services. Uh, web designers and you know all this. So, but my thinking is first start thinking about the opportunities, but also think about the talents you have. What can you use in this new era, which is coming up? And keep watching because things keep changing every day. You can't even predict three months ahead or even one month ahead. But broadly respond, respond positively with your talents you have. Look for opportunities outside if you feel your industry is insecure. Uh, develop yourself. Look at those industries which are coming up. Spend some time. Thankfully, there's so much online available. Go take a course, um, you know, like our NLP course. You go to Harvard, there are courses. You have all the top universities uh, doing and good prices as well. So can you go find and uh, develop a new skill which might be useful? Plus also being on your own. So I think this is the post-pandemic uh, world. Uh, you need to start looking at it and uh, preparing for it, I would think. Again, you can't predict. No one can predict. Go by the signs which are there. There's a serious study that says that they are inside the aircraft is better than they are in the malls. Yeah, because the system takes 99% of their out and it's always cleansed. So it's, uh, it's a lot of things are positive over there. So how the human brain works scientifically when the stress level goes up and how it gets adjusted up and down, I think it's important uh, uh, to know. So how, so Tansi, would you like to touch on this? I can also come this question by uh, Anura. Yeah. 
RX 7860 XP. You have a code name as well. Okay. Yeah. So uh, our brain is an amazing uh, piece of, you know, piece of machine, which we of course use like a piece of tin, you know, old piece of, you know, tin. But this laptop computer is much better than all those wonderful machines you have in front of you. So see our brain is a makeup of three parts and you know if this was your brain uh and i said if this was your brain it is not it is my hand uh has three different parts and uh, the bottom is the remnants of the reptilian brain so it's the part that actually goes into fight or flight response so if you are endangered uh, if it's if, it, if you're the stronger person, then we tend to fight. But if you're the weaker person, we tend to run. So that's the part that actually uh, gives us the fight or flight response. The middle part of our brain is actually the remnants of a mammalian brain. And it's the emotional part. So the more pressure you put on the middle part of the brain, it freezes. And then you can't think, you can't remember, uh, you get confused, you don't have clarity. And that's what happens when, let's say, you know, when you were maybe younger and you were working for an organization and you were heading sales, let's say, and you were passing down the corridor and your CEO says, you know, what's the sales so far for this month? And you were just looking at it on your computer before you stepped out. But when you, he asked you, you just don't remember and you go, I'll take it back to you, boss. Right? And then you drive home. It's a quiet drive. You're much more relaxed. You're looking forward to seeing your kids. Uh, and you go and knock, ring the bell and your wife opens the door. And she, for once, has a smile on her face. And she says, how are you, honey? And you say, 3,645,000. And he says, she says, how romantic. No? Because your middle part of the brain relaxed and the information flowed. So when Ranjan said, you know, to calm down, to relax, to be happy, essentially what NLP was telling us was, you know, the more you relax, the more your middle part of the brain will give, give you ideas on how you're going to move forward during this pandemic time. So it's important that, you know, we find ways of relaxing, whether it's going on a walk, it's free of charge, you know, right? whether it's meditating, whether it's, you know, reading a spiritual book, whether it's listening to soft music, all we're doing is helping our middle part of the brain relax. And by that, we're letting ourselves think much more clearer. Yeah. Brandon, you can add on. Yeah, I think you kind of covered it. So basically, simple answer, uh, but as you gave the structure, when you are stressed out, you're tensed up. Middle part is tense, that locks up the creativity. Ideas don't flow in. You make more mistakes. Um, I may, might get angry, you might scream, you will ruin relationships. Uh, so all, all this in terms of your idea generation as well as the uh, your team might be demotivated, your family might be demotivated. So therefore managing stress is so important using any of those techniques that you talked about so that you are having more ideas, you can take action. And also you are more energetic, you have more energy to go and do something. Otherwise you're stressed out, your energy is down, you go into that apathy level and you don't want to do anything about it. So this is why I suppose uh, it's important to uh, look after your stress levels. Uh, any other questions from anyone? We time up. We are happy to of course stay more if you want to. Um, and uh, so I think there's a question from Tarek. Let me just read it out. This is Ranjan, as you mentioned. Search for alternatives. I have been in the ONG industry for a number of years in order to avoid. So, by the way, what is ONG? Uh, it should be oil and gas. Basically. Okay, sorry. Yeah, a bit confused. Okay, fine. All these acronyms. Okay, so oil and gas industry for a number of years. 
in order to avoid this dependence i invested myself into the hospitality business with some friends in sri lanka the unfortunate situation during easter last year it is badly we overcame that was the end of the year so the positive turn and now are being hit with the pandemic how would you suggest that one overcomes this situation uh, simultaneous hurdles um well it's still baby step by baby step these are all external things which are outside the control um so one is of course macro decision strategic decisions saying okay if this is the kind of industry which is continuously to getting hit is this the industry i should be in could be one question uh, second is to know that like last time easter it bounced back not only easter in the last 30 40 40 years every time there were issues tourism drop it's bounced back even going into history the spanish flu where 50 million people died or something like that it's bounced back world wars and tsunamis so what i'm saying is you cannot control the environment you can just control yourself so some of the strategic decisions should i be in an industry or not secondly can i be in the industry with hope but also have other industries which will be my cash flow which will keep me going when things are down so sometimes it's about going into multiple industries which kind of uh, insulates each other as well um, so that's my answer to you and see can you keep those properties going your team engage now with um, i mean all this uh, quarantine hotels and stuff going on at least the most of hotels are at least having minimum uh, incomes having coming in to manage their staff Uh, and i think it's a great concept yeah. in, in the soon after the pandemic 25th of march i think i wrote a article at the, on the daily financial times about health tourism and there i talked about quarantine hotels and all this stuff partly it was for me to get back home i was giving ideas to the decision makers to do something and of course it did happen and i think now they're going to take that forward with and i i have suggested have pcrs in the airports all these things um and i think there is space of doing it so there are new jobs new vocations coming up hotels can offer in fact uh, i am part of the rotary movement and through the sri lanka standards we are offering something called uh, covid free environment certificate so you can get a first cert company called trelebo was certified 31 other companies are now lined up for certification so they'll get a badge like the iso certification which is a covid free certified certification i think it's the first in the world a covid certification is coming in and go get that certificate put it up make sure that and that certificate is given if all the practices are there to make it safe uh, in all the hygiene and everything which is happening so i suppose there is a lot of uh, possibilities out there uh, for us to start working on i hope i answered the question Uh, may not be a direct answer but it's it's about you finding answers being in that inquiring mind ask questions what can i do about it what's available what's possible share ideas so tarik was that useful are we were fine uh anything else one more question uh, ranjan from harshit indran on yeah. what are the techniques to overcome fear okay so first is basically about um, understanding fear is a, a false emotion i gave the i don't know whether i gave the acronym earlier fear stands for false education appearing real false education appearing real so the fear emotion happens when you have some knowledge which is false So if you really analyze and see what is causing that fear you will realize that a lot of that is unfounded is its uh, uh, predictions and forecasts or some something which was told by someone uh, so as much as possible try to uh, be critical about the information you have that is causing the fear and when you start getting critical and try to find out even when people share something ask them is this a is this a valid source is there real research behind it so what you are doing is you are using a part of a brain called the hippocampus this is the neurology part of it the fear and things happen but because of a part of the brain back here called the amygdala so when this information goes and hits the amygdala fear 
anger, all these kinds of negative emotions comes up. But when you start analyzing, you switch to the hippocampus, which is the analytical part, and you do a amygdala hijack where the information goes to the analytical part. So by analyzing the information and the sources, whether it's accurate and all that, takes the fear away. Your mental activity changes from the emotional part of the brain to the analytical part of the brain. So that is one step to take to overcome fear. So Tansy, you might want to briefly talk about anchors maybe to overcome fear, how to build an anchor and use it. It's an NLP, NLP tool. What I gave was a neurological tool. Tansy will give an NLP tool right now. Yeah. Uh, you're muted, I think. You're muted, Tansy. Uh, yeah, so uh, we all have heard of anchors. Anchors are in a ship that holds you know, the shipping plates. And just like that, if we have anchors in our life, it helps us no matter what storms brewing around us, it kind of helps us stay grounded. So one might ask, what is an anchor? So an anchor is anything that kind of, you know, reminds you of maybe a positive time or a negative time. So let's say, for example, you have a friend, uh, let's say Ranjan's your big buddy and every day you work in the same office. So every morning he comes into office, he would tap you on your shoulder and say how much up. You know, and for you, it's a positive anchor because Ranjan's a very positive uh, human being. You know, he's, uh, he's called Mr. Positive. And so every morning he does that. And for you, it's your start of day, it kind of, you know, it's going to be a good day. So then a few weeks later, one day he walks in and then finds you with your head buried, uh, you know, in your hand, looking very tired, looking very upset. And his instant reaction would be still like, you know, he'd tap you on your back and say, what's up, Macha? Right? The words changed, but it was that same tap. And you suddenly straighten up, right? So that tap in the back, the tonality of his voice is an anchor. Okay? So just like that, when you, you have, I think many of you, especially when you're away from home, you have your favorite Sinhala songs, the bailas, you know? Um, and when you hear it, it kind of brings that, you know, positive energy into your life. Uh, the papare music is another jolt for us to feel good. Okay. So all of these are anchors. So what we do is keep building positive anchors to a point that each of those change our whole mentality from afraid and, you know, depressed and sad to a positive feeling. So we build up anchors, you know, we stack up many anchors so that, uh, you know, you feel better. And for me, there's songs that I love that, you know, reminds me of awesome uh, situations, experiences, which I actually now use to keep myself, you know, upbeat and happy. And anytime I go online for a team meeting and these two people are there, then there is no reason to have a negative thought because they're my positive anchors as well. And I meant Ranjan and Prathana. Um, you know, we call Ranjan magician and Prathana super. Right? So for great reasons, it's a, you just keep building those anchors so that in the worst of times, those anchors are a reminder that we will get through this. Like Ranjan's blog post, this too shall pass. Ranjan, over to you. Yeah, so just to give a little, a little practical tool for you uh, on this anchors. Um, um, so what I would like you to do is, I'm going to build the anchor for you to overcome fear. Right? So this is how you do it. So can all of you make a fist like this? Make a fist, okay? Make a fist. Make a fist like this and as you make this fist let's go. Let's go, let's go. 
All right. uh, close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, go back to a time in your life that you were fearless. Go back to a time in your life you were fearless, you were courageous, a time that you could face anything. And think about a particular situation you faced where you were fearless and courageous. You made all the right decisions, you faced everything positively. And see the place you were, see the people who were there, see yourself there, hear what you heard, hear everyone around you talking to you and how you courageously spoke out and challenged someone and how you dis managed the situation so positively and feel what you felt, feel that energy, feel the confidence, feel the courage, see it, hear it and feel it and completely intensify it and intensify that feeling completely. And with that, slowly open your eyes. So what we did is we built an anchor now. So what you do is when next time the fear comes out, bring that the fist like this again. Your trigger, it's like putting on a switch. Now you're building the switch here by going into that neural makeup. You go to that place where this happened with the fist like this. And you keep repeating it. It's once may not be enough, keep repeating so that you build that like fancy was saying, tapping on the shoulder, like that, make this, close the eyes, keep building that anchor, maybe over for a week, two weeks, and every time that fear comes up, bring that fist up. Fear goes away because it brings it triggers off the positive neurons in your brain, a positive set of neurons which makes you feel courageous and confident. So this is good to overcome fear, to become confident. So like that, in the, in the workshop, we do we build loads of anchors and how to use it and how to get rid of all those negative anchors, all that will be done. So this is how we do it. I, I hope that was useful and uh, clear. Yeah, so that's what an anchor is, a simple example. There's a few questions here I want to just respond. Uh, Ram says that fear isn't always false education. Uh, though but need to put it into context yeah sometimes false education is make more contextualizing which also requires your hippocampus start thinking about it the worst case scenario doesn't usually play out yes plan for the worst case but hope for the best now all that activity you have written here planning taking those steps all that is activating the hippocampus so that it doesn't go into the amygdala so that's um, and of course, Chamat says, uh, are you recording? Yes, I think the session is being recorded by uh, the team at uh, the Business Council, SFDZ, and it will be shared with you, I suppose. And also it's in the Facebook page as well. Any other comments, questions from anyone? Yeah, so if that's it, I think we can now, uh, I'll finish off, we'll do two poems for you to take away. Uh, Tansy will go with the first one and I'll do the second poem. Uh, so Tansy, over to you. Okay, so I guess it's ladies first. All right, so before I get into the poem, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure being with you. Please feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, should you need any kind of um, you know, help, we'll do our best to be there for you. And to end the day, this we've got two poems. The first one is for ladies and it's called the plea of a lady. And uh, so it's for all the ladies in the room and also all the ladies of the men in the room. And it goes like this. All you need is a mirror. It says, mirror, mirror on the wall. What's the meaning of it all? Is there anything more to life than just being a loving wife? I love my children dearly but would they just come by yearly? Day by day, I go to the store, I cook, I clean, I wash their clothes. Will my dreams ever come true? Aren't they also some value too? I have a body, I have a soul, I have a dream, I have a goal. I want to earn, I want to reach, I want to learn, I wanna teach. I need a higher education, 
a chance to guide our nation. I am not rebelling. It's a higher need compelling. I need to fly from my cocoon to set my footprints on the moon. I like to see the world a better place, blessed by my special female grace. I don't want to be a man. I want to be the woman I am. Mirror, mirror on the wall, help me, help him hear my call. The only thing I want to see is the freedom for me to be really me. Thank you very much for your time. God bless each of you and keep all of you safe. And a poem okay. from me. Uh, this is for all the men in the room as well as for all the men in the ladies in the room. Guys, you have to find a crystal ball to enjoy this poem. So look at the crystal ball and say, crystal ball or oh crystal ball, what's the meaning of it all? Will my empire rise and fall, ashes to ashes, dust to dust? Sometimes I really fear just to be really me. I work, I earn the daily bread, I watch TV, I go to bed. Year after year I live on, but before I know the year is gone. I know this is not a practice game. I know there is no martyr's hall of fame. There are days even when the heroes are blown, but every day is the Super Bowl. Winning is a habit, so is losing. Losers live in glass houses doing nothing but mourning. Losers blame bad luck when they lose. They hide behind drugs and booze. Losers know how to procrastinate, while winners know how to accelerate. Winners know how to win, not yesterday, not tomorrow. Winners know winning is beginning, beginning is now. I dream it now, I need it now, I'll drive it now and I do it now. And then I see the picture of me, the person I really want to be. I think I can, and I know I can, to be my greatest coach and fan. And when I love myself, I get the strength to give to the world my special gift. And when I get exhausted and yet give my best, then I become that extraordinary man. And that's for all the guys in the room, as well as the gentlemen in the ladies attending the session today as well. So thank you so much, everyone. It was such a pleasure being with you. Uh, so happy to have done this. And we invite you to consider coming and joining our session. We can spend one week, uh, two hours every week for the next 10 weeks, starting from the 19th. Uh, is the next batch uh, so that we can you know ex you know experience this together in a more deeper detailed way so with that over to Riza and the team thank you uh, uh, ranjan yes uh, for that very insightful and interesting session uh, please stay on ladies and gentlemen we've got just a few more minutes i promise it's not going to take too long uh, so during these not so great times of course it was great to have such a such positivity and uh, that drive, which is absolutely required to keep us all motivated. Thank you very much, uh, Ranjan, Tanzi, and Pratana, as well as the team uh, for this very insightful session. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, I did very much enjoy it, and I hope the rest of you have got a lot of takeaways from it as well, which we could ponder upon, practice them, and uh, take a lot of positivity. Uh, for all those of you who joined us today, especially being a weekend here, in Dubai. Uh, we also invite you to another interesting webinar next Saturday, that's on the 20th June at five o'clock. So that's five o'clock UAE time. Uh, that's Saturday, five o'clock. And this will be on a discussion on COVID-19 and day-to-day -day life. And this will be by Dr. Modita, who is a microbiologist. And the event is to be moderated by Mr. Samir Yunus. So please keep this uh, date and time free. And please also keep an eye out on our website, uh, which is slbcdubai.com, as well as on our Facebook page uh, for further details on this. And uh, on behalf of the Sri Lankan Business Council, we thank you all once again for attending this valuable session. And I'd like to end it with a quote, uh, which says, believe you can, and you are halfway there. <laughs>